In today's episode, we will be launching our first Stian station just above Kerbin in the low Kerbin orbit at around the 90 kilometer mark. Let's go first into the research. Well, one of the key features here is the Clampatron Senior, which I need to research. So, and these two are the nodes that I need to unlock to be able to get it. That leaves us with 333 science, but we will actually take it later on. Now, let me just upgrade my science a little bit and then in the VAB, we should be first warping to complete so that our tech nodes get unlocked. Once they're unlocked, we can actually start building our station. And obviously, I want to have this station, I want to launch it uncrewed because it will be, you know, cargo launch. So I'm gonna plan and uh, have a small probe core that will be actually controlling everything, all the aspects of the of the science station, its functioning, its pitch, and its ascent to the orbit. All right, so with that thing said, we have the core station, and it's a little bit weird to have it on the tower, but uh, I honestly, I didn't have a better place to put it because I don't have big probes yet. Also, I'm experimenting with these big solar panels because I don't have yet the gigantors, which I normally use on my stations. So let's put in two batteries so that we have sufficient electric charge and then let's figure out how do we cram these solar panels. I'm thinking four. Yeah, that looks actually quite nice because then regardless of how the station is oriented, uh, we have everything. Okay, let's see, we can close this down. This actually looks mighty fine, if I may add so. Uh, I'm gonna t add one additional so that we can cram antennas on top. I mean, this station will be primarily a science station, but it will also dub as a relay because I put then the two communitron antennas and those will actually be able to go to, you know, they will have the range to reach Eve and Duna because I have already some probes that are getting ready to go, one to Eve and one to Duna. The transfer window for the Eve probe will be happening quite soon. Uh, maybe even while this station is being built and some of the things will should be happening simultaneously But let's put in the lab. By the way, these uh, experiments here are from the mod station science And this is a fantastic mod that actually gives your space stations meaning so this research lab is Actually will be generating some Eurekas and Eurekas is a currency for conducting science experiments in the orbit I really love this mod. It's amazing. I've been playing with it even in my Interplanetary voyage series one and two if you haven't checked those out those are very old But still quite fun and I enjoy them a lot. So yeah, I have loads of KSP series on my channel. I think I have a total of four or five and each of them has around 80 to 100 episodes. So if you haven't checked them out, you have a lot of binge content there. Okay, that being said, now we are putting the, uh, the this senior docking ports because those will be the basis for expansion. Now, the point is that uh, the premise of this um, uh, station is that you have to have this science lab. Science lab generates these Eurekas. Eurekas are currency, currency to conduct research and then you put small landers packed with individual experiments that come to the station, dock, conduct the research and then you actually cannot send it but you have to retrieve it. I mean you can send it but then you lose a lot of science. However, if you retrieve it, you get a load of science. And here I've also buried another probe core because I want to con be able to control this little drum roll either to deorbit it or to do anything else with it. Now, given the fact that I have nowhere else to dock stuff and this will have the orbital maneuvering thrusters, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the docking ports on this guy. So yeah, that one has to have docking ports to be able to contain everything. But let's put the first everything into a nice fairing. And it will be a little bit weird shaped fairing. Yeah, like that. And it will be deploying like a clamshell. <laughs> yeah, what can I tell you? It's a little bit weird, but it will work. Now, speaking of which, I need to remember to just put in, let's see, auto strut everything just to make sure that this uh, fairing doesn't go to smithereens. Now, let's put the two docking ports. Here is where our experiment craft will be docking. Right. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do, I want to put the large tank. 
that will be getting this thing to orbit to its desired orbit and I'm actually trying to keep it simple so I'm thinking I'm gonna go with Bagora tank and let's see uh, 4.2 thousand meters per second that's almost feels like it's enough uh, maybe I could put in a smaller stage that would actually just make sure to get it to the right place okay there we go let's change the Caillou tank to the liquid uh, methane all right now okay decoupler oh that looks ugly oh I need uh, where is it where is it engine plate do we have an engine plate nope oh boy okay I have to find some sort of a 2.5 meter engine plate which I don't have so I'm gonna go with the fairing rather I'm gonna be putting the first decoupler 1.8 then we put the fairing yeah this if you don't have an engine plate you can actually do something like this and it will still work call it tutorial how to replace engine plates with something useful so your rocket still doesn't look like crap okay now that being said let's put some uh, fins at the bottom and I think this overall this rocket looks quite simple right it is launching a complex payload but okay let's see I'm trying to find a good launch pad for it uh, shall we go I actually might go for the Falcon 9 or actually ooh, even that one looks kind of cool okay closer rector open rector that actually looks that like it could work yeah right okay good Let's put it a little bit down. Let's put it as it should be. With the engine bells obviously buried into the concrete. Nah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fins. We put it like those. And then... Okay, let's custom group it now. First, on the 10, we put it toggle. So that we open it up. And then we actually can decouple it. And everything else will be mighty fine. Right. Cool, so we are rolling it out to the launch pad and in four, three, two, one, and okay. Let's close these up and then we will be ready to launch our Kerbin Science Station, shall we? There we go. Looks simple enough. Three, two, one, and let's open up the clamps. Sorry, now, three, two, one, and let's ignite the, let's light this candle. There we go, and, and we're off. We have cleared the tower, yay. I always like taking pictures of the launch. This just goes phenomenally up. Okay, let's accelerate a little bit. Nobody is here to watch one rocket ascend for the next 20 minutes. Okay, so let's pull a little bit with our gravity assist or sorry maneuver um, gravity turn yes no morning coffee what can I tell you I need to drink it before I start recording all right so we are going now sideways we have uh, 1200 meters per second in our core stage we are accelerating nicely a little bit of me more steep ascent profile and I'm thinking I'm gonna go for the 90 kilometer orbit ish uh, because I wanted to be able to later on send it experiments with SSTOs and whatnot. So I'm thinking something like that. Okay, let's put on the apoapsis. The idea is that it's around 90 kilometers and okay. Circularization wise, everything looks fine. We are already in the orbit. Sorry, not in the orbit, in space. Ditching the fairing, pointing maneuver prograde, which will be happening in 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We can actually start burning a little bit earlier, it doesn't matter. Okay, because I know we have a longer decoupling sequence here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. LH2, liquid hydrogen. Okay. So, yeah, it's, sorry, it's a little liquid hydrogen engine. Yeah, not liquid methane. Yeah, my, my bad. All right. Here you go. And we have 500 meters per second in this stage. 
and once we decouple that then we'll be having our little orbit and our little maneuvering thrusters which should finally get this craft to its final orbit and that's fine because we will be going there anyway and the moon going behind the curb and bye bye by the way these clouds this volumetric clouds really look puffy they look amazing i don't know i'm just enjoying playing with this mod it's amazing all right 200 meters per second 100 meters per second almost there decoupling oh oopsie should have probably waited a bit before igniting that engine 50 meters per second and okay i mean let's raise the periapsis a little bit by burning radial outwards okay so it's 105 by 75 because the orbital maneuvering engines are really weak so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna now decrease my apoapsis to roughly 90 meters 90 kilometers sorry so i'm just uh, i'm not unpacking my solar panels until i have reached my final orbit right you have to remember this is craft has no pilot it's actually completely automated all right good and now at the apoapsis we will be raising our periapsis to a 90 by 90 orbit which and then put the station in the orbit uh, what's it called uh, normal i think orientation so yeah we will it will be upright so to say the burn will be coming in 40 seconds almost there all right almost there and 90 by 90 okay good now we need to shut off our engines orbit normal orientation there we go with docking port everything all right good solar panels extension good to make sure that we have plenty of supply target you, one will be pointing towards Eve, and another one will be pointing to an active vessel. Where's my active vessel? Okay, good. Perfect. And there we go. Obviously, we cannot start the research, but uh, that will be happening in the next episode. Hope you liked today's episode. If you found it entertaining and informative, do click that like button, and I will see you in the next one.